CDOT recently introduced requirements for employees returning to work on site at facilities across the state. Included are procedures designed to minimize exposure and transmission of COVID-19 and other infectious diseases while maintaining efficient operations in the workplace. For the next 180 seconds, you'll learn three steps to better understand and follow these requirements, ultimately making them part of your new daily routine to help keep yourself and others safe here at CDOT. Step one, learn the requirements. To make transitioning back to work easier for employees, CDOT created a webpage devoted to this topic and has filled it with articles, videos, and step-by-step -step instructions to help guide you through the process of returning to work safely. You can access these resources by going to the Employee Safety Google site and navigating to Return to Work under Home and COVID-19 information in the header. While you're there, be sure to read and become familiar with the Return to Work Requirements document and Employee Acknowledgement form. The acknowledgement form is just one step in the larger return to work process. You will need to complete and return the form to your supervisor, indicating that you understand and agree to all requirements before you can actually head back to work. Step two, practice. While CDOT's position remains that anyone who currently can work from home should continue to do so, it's understood that there are some situations where employees will need to return to the workplace. However, occupancy should never exceed 50% for any building, site, or facility. Even with fewer employees around, it's the small adjustments you make to your everyday routine that provide the best safeguard against transmission and spread of infectious diseases. Any employee returning to work should plan to consistently monitor their health. Be on the lookout for symptoms or signs of illness and get into the habit of doing daily temperature checks. Let's all be proactive. Stay home if you're sick or have a fever over 100.3. Clean and sanitize areas around your workspace often, especially objects you use frequently. Continue practicing good hygiene, wearing a mask, and avoiding highly touched surfaces. Step three, encourage others. Even the most diligent of people can sometimes forget to wear a mask or maintain those six feet of space for social distancing. If you notice someone not following return to work requirements, don't be afraid to offer a gentle reminder or some coaching, but always be respectful and professional when asking someone to adjust their behavior. After all, this is new for everyone and many of us are still learning. In the last 180 seconds, you've learned three steps to understand, cope with, and adapt to CDOT's new return to work requirements. With a little practice, and by looking out for one another, we can normalize these behaviors and turn them into safer work habits. It's now time for you to use the Safety 180 Action Sheet to reinforce the safe work behaviors outlined in this video so you are prepared to return to work.